average. Good. Oh, below average. Oh, um, all right. Um, should we should we hit should we hit record? Yes, I did. Okay. This video is for period seven. Um, say hi to period seven, everybody. Hi. 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 You can do a you can do a pan if you want to. Just all right. say hi, everybody. Um, this is because they had bomb threats, and so they missed an hour of class, and so we're making it up like this. Because um, they're like they're like an hour behind. All right. Um, back over here, last class, which was glorious, as usual, but no, more glorious than usual, we learned what a matrix really is. Matt Mars, what is a matrix really? Oh, what did you say? Uh, you just did a whole entire homework where you just you know, slide this idea over and over and over again. A way to transform points? It is a way to transform points, yeah. Or you can think of it as a way to transform vectors. In fact, it is a function which transforms vectors. So every matrix performs some kind of geometric transformation. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you had a homework on it, which to some extent was just like kind of doing a bunch of stuff over and over again. Let's take a look at it. Uh, here was a matrix uh, in number one. Um, this matrix, it appears that what it does is dilate. Don't lose sight of the fact that the matrix on the left is the function, and what we are doing is having a three-course meal. Vector, 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 and then output, output, output. Um, so this person, picture number one, looks beautiful. Brian made a triangle, triangle ABC. What happens? Indeed, that triangle is dilated by scale factor two about the origin. Excellent. Uh, number three um, was kind of interesting. Picture number three. Yeah, um, Flora had a matrix over here. Um, the points were 1, 0, 3, 0, 3, 4, and 1, 4. Those points uh, were a rectangle, and this matrix um, operating on these vectors made this new uh, output vectors, and that was like a sheared, that was a sheared um, rectangle. Um, cool. Uh, number five, this person did not use different colors, but whatever. Um, the, uh, this was a matrix, I think this is also some kind of a shear. This time, this one was a little bit more interesting because we had the points, oh yeah, period seven. You have to do your homework before watching this video. So if you haven't done your homework yet, turn this video off, do your homework, and then turn it back on because we're going over it now. All right, um, so we have an original, uh, was also a rectangle, but it was a rectangle which this time was like, you know, contain the origin in its interior, but uh, nonetheless, this is uh, performing a shear. It's, it's a vertical uh, shear, shear up. And we get this new sort of parallelogram thing. Cool? Go. Oh, is something wrong? It's supposed to be something went wrong? Okay, hold on. Sorry, I didn't even check. I just assumed it was right. Um, such as my confidence in you all. So, so the math is right, but the picture's wrong? Oh, so, so the original problem was just copy down wrong. But otherwise, it's right? Oh, that's it? One, zero, three, zero, three, four, one, four. So it's one, zero, three, zero. So that should be a three. No, oh man, wait. No, too late. Now I don't trust anyone. I'm doing it myself. Um, the, okay, so it's uh, one, uh, zero, check, uh, three, uh, zero, check, uh, four. This should be a four, and this should also be a four, right? Yeah, and then. Uh, this should be a 2, and this should be a 4. Now is it right? Okay, good. So wait, was the picture right? Oh, uh, I see. So, so, it, so it's, so, it's also picture is like not right. The blue part is just not right the top. The blue is wrong, right? Yeah. Okay, so to fix this, now the actual poop points chicken are one face zero, poops. 3, 0, <laughs> Four, four, and two, four. So now that's right. Why is that not right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So it's like a. Oh, so the original picture was wrong, also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, I scored it to one. Was that um, oh, wait, that here, Court, this is making you look bad. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I like one zero, uh, three zero, three four, I see, and one four. Okay, so the original was in green, and this was like a sheer to the right. Better now? Okay, good. All right, um, back to number, let's go to number seven. Uh, what's going on? We have a triangle. Here it is. It gets, this is the function, it gets um, transformed and basically looks like this is the um, rotate 90 degrees um, counterclockwise matrix. Beautiful. Um, this is another matrix. This is another triangle. Three course meal. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Out, out, out. What we get is the new triangle, DEF, which is the reflection over the line y equals x. Okay. Then we get this very strange thing happening over here in number 15. This is the 1111 uh, matrix, a very interesting matrix. Um, what geometric transformation is it performing? Do your homework. Great. Okay, uh, well, we have this triangle, negative one, negative two, call that point A. Uh, 2, 4, we call that point B, and 6, 3, we have to call that point C. And what is happening to this triangle? Well, um, I think the math is right, yeah? Yeah. So, what the hell is going on? I wonder. Oh, who did number 15? Yeah, Kevin, comments. What do you mean? You made um, some comments already. It, well, it just, like, all the points went on to y equals x. Yeah. All the points went on to the line y equals x. I agree. Shall we act out in dramatic fashion what this what this matrix is doing? Everyone? Yes. Everyone, stick out your arms. Okay, and now act out. Do an interpretation of the act of the of what this matrix does. Wait, really? <laughs> what is this matrix doing? Yeah, Laura. Oh, what what are you doing? You're just like scratching. If it's like this, and then it makes all the yeah, good. Yeah, you're the only one who's actually made any sense. Yeah, it appears. It appears that what this that what this matrix appears to be doing is taking points, which may be anywhere, and what's it doing to them? Yeah, it's just. Yeah, this is a killer. This is a killer matrix. Um, this kills. This kills the points. It takes points and it just kills them. It flattens the triangle. It flattens them. That is very interesting, and I think I have some more to say about this. In fact, I definitely do. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, good. Let's put a pause on that uh, and go up to the front board. Um, so I gave you like four or five of these problems where there was a particular pair of vectors was being transformed to a new pair, and you had to um, and you had to you had to figure it out. You had to figure out what matrix does that. There are two ways to do it, basically. Um, there is the way that the book said to do it, and then there's the way that we did it in class, and I see like half the people did it half the way, so that's kind of cool. So in number 17, who did number 17? Um, Cassia did it, this is like how the book did it, right? So the, the book said, um, or the, the handout said, you know, take a uh, matrix, call it, you know, whatever, here it is. She, she calls it like ABCD, like that. And we know that it transforms vector 4, 5 to 14, 17, and vector 2, 1 to 4, 7. So she sets up the matrix multiplication, and then, I don't like this, I, this way as much because it seems kind of like boring, but it totally works. Um, by using the definition of matrix multiplication, you can multiply it out, then get a system of equations in A and C, a system of equations in B and D, and we can just solve them, and then, and then we're done. And you can always check it, by the way, right, by just multiplying the matrix back through it and, and making sure you get what you get. And this is how, this part, who did 19? Yeah, this is how Nick did 19 uh, as well. Uh, he did the same basically thing. Set up a mystery matrix that transforms 3, 4 to 9, 6, and 1, negative 1 to negative 4, 2. Multiply it out, get the system of equations, and then it turns out that this is the matrix. Um, I kind of like this way of doing it, I think, a little bit better. Uh, because it uses some of the other things that we've learned. So who did um, who did 21? Whoa. Uh, yeah, can you play with that balloon another time? 
Okay, good. Um, yes, Michael Tang said, um, said, okay, here's some mystery matrix. It takes 2, 0 to 2, 0. It takes 0, 3 to 4, 3. Let's figure out what that matrix is. So he set it up as a matrix equation, right? This is how we did it in class. He called the mystery matrix A, he called this matrix A, and like this matrix B. And essentially what this involves then is solving the matrix equation X A equals B. We did this in class, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how does, uh, Michael Tang, how do we solve the matrix equation X A equals B? You write apply by A inverse. You write apply by A inverse. Yep. That is exactly correct. Uh, and that will, will solve this matrix equation. So I just did a little bit of matrix algebra there, and he did it too. He just kind of like did it uh, without writing all the steps out. Um, so he finds the inverse of matrix A, you know, one over the determinant times those two flip, those two get negative, and then you just multiply that by matrix B on the left. I don't actually see his work. You just kind of did it in your head? Yeah. So he takes, he takes, he, want, he needs to multiply B by A inverse. So the, probably the chillest thing to do is just to leave the 1 6th on the outside um, and then just take matrix B, which is 2, 4, 0, 3, and multiply it by uh, matrix A, which is, or by matrix A inverse, which is 3, 0, 0, 2. And when you do that, you're going to get 1 6 times. This is, this is exactly what he did. Uh, 6, 0. Uh, what's up? What's wrong with the matrix? Sally, stay down. Uh oh. Did you run from or something? <laughs> Oh. That's how the board is Michael going. Michael Tang, I think you messed up. Did I do the wrong? I don't know, I think you copied. I read. 2, 0 is supposed to go to 2, 4. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, actually, Michael Tang is really bad. This is like a misconception of the whole setup. So, actually, we need to cry. Because. Uh, <laughs> because this is, this is the incorrect oh, way. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, so no, I got left implied. I did X when I. No, he, he did. He did. He set up the entire problem wrong. Is, that, is actually, I think, what happened, right? Or you read it wrong off the paper. In twenty one, the the original point is two zero, and the image of two zero is the vector two four. Does everyone got that under control, right? That's how it works, right? It's a it's a column vector. So two zero goes to two four, and um, zero three goes to zero three. So I think your matrix are all wrong, but yeah. Okay, what's the what's the answer? To Actually, I don't care. Let's move on. Twenty-five. Uh, Twenty-five. Um, done in green. I don't know how visible this is going to be, but um, it's the same kind of thing. We have a mystery matrix, and this matrix eats the. Wait a second. No, I think it's wrong again, right? Oh my god. I can't copy properly. Oh, who did 25? What is going on? Yeah, I think, right, I think this is wrong, right? Because it's supposed to take... Randall did the same thing. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know, he did a different thing wrong. Hold on. Uh, yeah, guys, everyone, uh, please focus. Uh, I have a mystery matrix. This is the way you should be thinking about it. I have a mystery matrix that I don't know what it is. Call that matrix like X. What is this matrix doing in number 25? It is taking the point 2, 3, and it is transforming it to negative 3, 2. And then it is taking the, the vector negative 1, 4, and it is transforming it to negative 4, negative 1. Vail, do you see what you did wrong? I think you just set up the whole problem like wrong or whatever. Okay, so. Again, this is xA equals b, so how do I solve xA equals b? I write apply by a inverse, and so x is b a inverse. And now it's just a matter of doing that. So here is b, negative 3, negative 4, 2, negative 1, and a inverse is going to be 8 minus negative uh, 3, so it's 11, so there'll be a 1 11 on the outside, and then in, to get the inverse of a 2 by 2, you swap these two, you put a negative in front of those two. So this is going to be my answer, whatever this turns out to be. 
Let me just do it. Uh, that's negative 22, I think. Stop me, but no, I think it's wrong. Um, negative and 12, so that's zero. Yeah? Um, and then negative, that's negative 11. That's 11. That is zero. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so the final answer was like a little bit boring, actually. It was just zero, negative one, one, zero. And maybe you could have just guessed that, right? Because what this is doing is, uh huh, it's rotating. No, it's ref what's it doing? Reflecting over the line y equals negative x, I think. I don't know. Ninety degrees counterclockwise. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. This is rotating. This is the this is the rotate ninety degrees counterclockwise. Cool. Right, how are you feeling about this? Is everyone corrected? Misconceptions? Okay, good. All right. Um, let's let's talk about the fun uh, problems, which were um, these ones. Twenty eight was, in my opinion, kind of the heart of of the whole program. Uh, twenty eight was a like you know had like. Ten parts to it, or something, and the whole thing was supposed to. When you were done, um, you were you were able to write the matrix for all these various transformations by name. Um, so good. Uh, let's do it. I'm gonna go just kind of like rapid fire, okay? All right. So 28, uh, 28A. Here we go. 28A says we need to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so here's my thought process. I have my original vectors. I have my mystery matrix. I need to see what this matrix does to 1, 0, and I need to see what it does to 0, 1. Well, if we're rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise, then 1, 0 is going to end up at 0, 1, yeah? Oh, this is the one we just did. Oh, well. Uh, and what is happening to, what is this matrix doing to the vector 0, 1? It's sending it to negative 1, 0. So what matrix performs this transformation? That one, because this is just the identity matrix. Vigorous head nuts if you get it. Cry if you don't. Okay, good. B, um, rotation of 180 degrees. Again, I have the matrix, the mystery matrix. I have the unit vectors, and then I'm going to see what the matrix does to the unit vectors. If we're rotating 180 degrees, then 1, 0 should get sent to uh, negative 1, 0. Yeah? And 0, 1 should get sent to 0, negative 1. Boom, done. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to stop doing this setup anymore because I just like got it now. Is that okay with you guys? All right, so faster. C, what is the dilation? I just like know that one. 5, 0, 0, 5. Good. D. Contraction that moves each point 0.3 times as far from the origin. Okay, well, if it's a contraction, that's also a kind of a dilation, but it's a dilation with scale factor 0.3. Um, good, 28E. All right, this one is, I kind of object to Forster's language a little bit. He says it's a horizontal shear that moves points above the x-axis to the right by an amount three times their distance from the x-axis. Okay, all right, that sounds like a hard sentence. So we need to try this again. So here is the vector one, zero, and here is the vector zero, one. And let's try to figure that out, what he's talking about. Okay, um, again, it's a horizontal shear. What does it do? It moves points above the x-axis. So in other words, if the point is not above the x-axis, it doesn't move it at all. Agreed? Okay, so it's not doing anything to 1, 0. But if a point is above the x-axis, which this one is, then it moves this point to the right. How much does it move it to the right? By an amount three times its distance from the x-axis. In other words, by its y-coordinate. So this point is getting moved to the right uh, by 3. So this is ending up at 3, 1. Is that what you guys got? OK. Yeah, so there was like the original unit square, and then points above the x-axis were being moved to the right by an amount three times their distance from the x-axis. 
And so this is our, this is our horizontal shear. Um, and thus, I can give the answer to this problem. Here is what this matrix is doing. It is taking 1, 0, and it's sending it to 1, 0. It's taking 0, 1, and it's sending it to 3, 1. Everyone good? All right, does anyone have an objection to this wording? Because I do. Yeah, um, you moved. Sally. Because I was in the yeah. way. Sally, what's your objection? Uh, it's just confusing. Oh, it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> the objection is I don't like it. Yeah. I enjoy it. So like, it's a little imprecise, his language that he uses. Yeah, yeah why? Yeah. It's like... Too slow. Okay, well, my objection is it uses the word distance, which now then kind of makes everything a little bit... Like it says by points above the x-axis. But what if the point is below the x-axis? Like, it's also going to transform it. You guys kind of with me? Right, like if I, if I plugged an arbitrary vector into this matrix, then what I would get back is x plus 3y, um, and here I would get y. So in reality, what is this matrix doing? It's, it's changing the x-coordinate of each point by three times the y-coordinate. He shouldn't really talk about distance because then it's sort of blurring the distinction between it's not necessarily going to move points to the right, right? If their y coordinate is negative, it's going to move the points to the left. Who is with me? This is something of a subtlety. Okay, good. I'm objecting to Forster's language. Um, and he can't stop me because he's, he's probably dead right now. He wrote this book like 30 years ago. All right. Um, Alice, should we finish? Let's finish. F um, is a vertical shear. A vertical shear that moves points to the right of the y-axis down by an amount of... Oh, man, it's hard again. Okay, I draw a picture. Uh, and here we go. Uh, a vertical shear. It moves points to the right of the y-axis, such as this one, y0, zero, uh, one zero. How does it move them? It moves them down by an amount 0.8 times their distance from the y-axis. Okay, so this is getting moved down. And by how much is it getting moved down? It's getting moved down by 0.8 times um, its distance from the y-axis. But points which are not uh, uh, which are not away from the x-axis, uh, or that are not to the right of the y-axis, rather, um, are not getting moved at all. So there, that is my understanding of what this paragraph is saying. And therefore, this is a vertical downward shear. Again, I can draw the, the unit square. I think that does help to see what's going on. And then we have a little bit of that. OK, but the takeaway is that the vector 1, 0 is being transformed to, sorry, is being transformed to 1, negative 0.8. And the vector 0, 1 is staying at 0, 1. Is that what you guys all got? OK, good. Um, OK, last couple. Uh, inversion. Uh, inver uh, inversion that interchanges the values of x and y. Okay, so 1, 0 is going to get sent to 0, 1, and 0, 1 is going to get sent to 1, 0. Done. Uh, H, reflection through the y-axis that changes the sign of each x-coordinate. Well, if reflecting through the y-axis, then 1, 0 is going to go to negative 1, 0, and 0, 1 will stay the same. Good. I, uh, uh, reflection through the x-axis. Okay, if reflecting over the x-axis, I'm doing this all in my head, is that okay? If reflecting over the x-axis, then 1, 0 is going to stay there, but 0, 1 is going to go to 0, negative 1. J, uh, oh, this is exciting, this is a combo. Transformation that both rotates each point counterclockwise by 90 degrees and also dilates. Okay, so if we're rotating 90 degrees and also dilating, then 1, 0 is going to go to... We're careful. Rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise and dilating by scale factor 3. So 1, 0 is going to go to 0, 3. And 0, 1 is going to go to negative 3, 0. You okay? All right, last one. Okay. Transform oh, it's the killer. Transformation then moves every point to the line y equals x. I have seen, I have seen you before. Although there are others, too, that would do that. Um, yeah, interestingly, yeah, more on that later. Maybe we should, yeah, I mean, this is the killer, but this is like even more of a killer matrix, right? What does this do? 
Um, Flora, can I have your interpretive dance of pen? Pen camera. Can I get your interpretive dance of what the zero 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 matrix does? Zero zero zero. Zero zero. This one. Zero. Wait. What does that do to that? Oh, I'm putting you on the spot. Nick. <laughs> I like Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is collapsing. <laughs> Dab it off. Dab it. This is collapsing. <laughs> We're not messed up. <laughs> yeah, um, Mindy had a good one too. Mindy New York. You don't have to do it for camera, just do it for us. No. Oh, too late. You're on camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is collapsing everything to just a point, right? Because everyone, that seems pretty clear that if you multiply this matrix by any vector, you're just going to get the zero, the zero vector. Okay, that's interesting and worthy of discussion, which is going to happen in about two minutes. But now, oh, first we will do, oh, bonus, exciting problem number 31, uh, magnet program style only. Um, we are now in space. Whoa. What, and perhaps some of you are thinking of this, sometimes this comes up, but this year it didn't come up at all. If a 2 by 2 matrix is a function which transforms a 2D vector to another 2D vector, then was anyone thinking yesterday or the other day in class, oh, what is a 3 by 3 matrix then? Well, answer, naturally, if you didn't think of it yourself, then Forster made you think of it. A 3 by 3 matrix is a, what is it? What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a bigger box? Is a, a bigger box. box. If you have more numbers to organize, then it's even better. Yeah, it's going to be now, it's going to be a function which is hungry for a 3 by 1 vector, right? Because that's how matrix multiplication works. And it's going to output another 3 by 1 vector. So it is a function which operates on uh, three-dimensional vectors and produces another three-dimensional vector. Okay, and now uh, he says this right here in part A. He's like, consider the following matrix. Um, what does this matrix do to points in space? Well, again, if you feed this the vector x, y, z, what are you going to get back? 5x, 5y, 5z. So what does, in words, what does matrix A do? Dilates by scale factor five about the origin, you know, in space. Okay, um, and now things are getting a little harder. B says, find a three by three matrix that rotates figures in space by 90 degrees counterclockwise about the Z axis. Okay, 90 degrees counterclockwise about the Z axis. Um, again, I'm a little bit upset with Forster because it's a little bit vague. You really should say, does anyone have trouble with this, like I did? What was the trouble? Yeah. Like, I wasn't really sure, like, like, it's like 90 degrees, like, counterclockwise, so I wasn't really sure, like... Yeah, which way are we looking at it, right? From above or from below? It's, like, a little unclear. So we really should say about the, I think we should say about the positive z-axis. I think that makes it more clear. Because now, so now here's what's happening. We're over here, right? This is the this is the this is the thing. So here's the z-axis, right? That's that one. So if we are rot what we now need to do is rotate points in space about the z-axis. In other words, if you're standing above, looking down on the z-axis, what are we doing with our what are we doing with our space? We're moving it, right? Nine degrees kind of, kind of so that would be this way. Does that one does that one agree? This whole, it helps if you're like standing where I am, but yeah, the whole room is just going to go like some kind of inception scene or something like that, right? The whole room is going to like move. Okay, so, everybody with me? Okay, good. I mean, you did the problem for homework, so maybe you just got it already. So what is going to happen to the vector, um, well, I guess here's, here's what we have to do now. We have to think of it like this, right? What is going to happen to the vector 1, 0, 0? which is the positive x-axis. Where is it going to go? If the, whole, if the whole space is being rotated by 90 degrees counterclockwise about the z-axis, where does it go? 0, 1, 0. zero, one, zero. Yep. The positive x-axis is being transformed to the positive y-axis. You guys with me? Okay. What is happening to the positive y-axis? 
Yeah, it's getting also, so this is the positive y-axis here. This is getting rotated. So now this is negative 1, 0, 0. Yeah? And then what happens to the z-axis? Unchanged. Boom. So if you're doing 3D graphics, then this is the kind of crap you need to know how to do. Because if you want to rotate three-dimensional vectors, then this is, this is more relevant. Okay. Again, we have a class called 3D graphics, I think. They do, the, they do all the stuff. All right, this is the hard one. Uh, again, we're now performing some sort of 3D shear. Okay, so let's do it. Let's first of all figure out the hell force is talking about. Find a 3 by 3 matrix that shears figures in space so that points above the xy plane move in the positive x direction by an amount equal to twice their distance from the xy plane. <sighs> okay, we're shearing in space, and what points are we shearing? I'm reading directly from the book. We're shearing points which are above the xy plane. So first of all, if you have a zero z coordinate, you're not being changed at all. Agree? That's how I read this. So one zero zero is still being sent to one zero zero. Zero one zero is still being sent to zero one zero. The question becomes, what happens to uh, what happens to uh, points which do have a positive z component? Okay. Well, what are we doing? What are we doing with one uh, zero zero one? We are moving it um, in the positive x direction. In other words, the x the x coordinate of of those points are going to change. And how are they going to change? By an amount equal to twice their distance from the xy plane. I would say by an amount equal to twice their z coordinate would be more precise. So what we're getting is two zero one. Raise hand if you've got this on your own. Like four people or something. The rest of you, what happened? Confused? Panicked? Gave up? Wording was hard? What's up? Oh, no. You had that? Yeah. Yeah, that we're dilating. So what, 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 this, what this is happening is this whole, if you, if you picture the unit cube, there's a unit cube over here, and the unit cube is getting pushed forward in the positive x direction by, by an amount, by like, Time two, that way. Okay, cool. How are you feeling about all this? Is that good? Okay, good. Um, uh, can I have this homework? Uh, let's hand it in right over there on that empty table next to Justin. Make sure your name is on it. Your name's on it. Wait, Justin Forrester? Justin Forrester homework, yes. Yeah. Still recording? Why? Oh yeah, let me get this. Why, actually? Oh yeah.